Hi friends, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to design a simple, very, very simple um, bracelet. Um, I have done this before in my channel with Bargain Beatbox subscription, I guess. But this is going to be a simple bead stringing project that everybody can do with odds and ends that you have available in your stash sometimes you will have half a strand or quarter strand which you don't know what you will be able to i came across such um, things from the bargain beatbox stash a uh, while ago so this was what i was left with there was a couple of blues and this orange agate beads that i have the eight millimeter faceted one i had quite some of those and this octopus um, pendant and then some ear wires and stuff like that I just kept it like this so I thought why not use this bead okay and I'm gonna do um, this bracelet uh, for a challenge that comes every month on the 18th mm -hmm. so it's a jewelry making fun collab challenge so I wanted to make a bracelet out of it and the challenge was to use orange yellow green um, brown like fall colors any color combination is what the challenge is so i thought okay i have some of these beads which i can use to make a bracelet a quick bracelet uh, because mm, like in my life sometimes it goes really crazy right we all have that days wherein you are not able to do anything for yourself rather than you know taking care of the family and stuff so i have been through one of those, phase, those phases so i wasn't able to do um think and do much so what i thought was a quick bracelet would be an idea so that at least i can upload my video a couple of days late but still i can do that challenge for this month of september so that's what i thought and then um so that this bracelet came to my mind it's a very simple bracelet if you have the uh, components then you can do so so this was the beats the odds and ends um, bracelet i call this this was the beats i was left over with uh, from the box so i wanted to use that plus these bead caps these bead caps are amazing bead caps and they have this patina coat in it as you guys can see very cute ones so i really like them a lot but i was i didn't use it completely in the project and also this uh, pretty shell one uh, so the second challenge was to use a get beads so this fits the bill um, and i have some eight or seed beads these are not quality eight or seed beads these are just regular brands so they are of different sizes let me different length and stuff it's just big and small that's okay but still i like this antique color um, seed beads a lot because you can use it with different color combinations and my to go as i have been always telling in my channel my to go are the metallic ones when you add the metallic ones that creates a nice pop to your project is what i feel but as you guys can see the beads are a little bit you know not uniform this one especially i need to change that but that i will come to that later but um as i said so this is the pattern i came up with so it's an asymmetrical bracelet don't do a symmetrical bracelet it will the asymmetrical bracelet will pay off and i have to use orange green i have already uh, all those colors and then for an yellow i got this one this is not yellow i would say but slightly yellow uh, it's like a brown brown i guess so this orange these beads are from my stash okay the all these beads are from my stash and um, this one is from bargain beadbox subscription these this spacer bead was also just like a bicone bead which has a patina in it i have used that too then i have used some spacer beads in anti gold which is this right here four of them not much but you can see how nice and coordinated it is this bead is from my stash it's a big crystal bead in olive green color because i wanted to include the include the green for the challenge and also for the orange it complements a lot and this one is for the brown i want a lighter shade i don't want to go, go for a darker shade but you can do that as well but this one is for an orange as well but the orange is much more matted and tuned and the silver the bronze the patina the anti-cold kind of ties together and then i since it's an asymmetrical bracelet i want one section of the bracelet to have chunky beads but i don't want all of them to be chunky as you guys can see 
this is what I have and I really like the way this um, this um, has but you need to keep it in the U format and see if it, so I I feel that this one is okay but you need to kind of see this in a round format and it if it looks good so this one goes a little bit out but I really like it so I'm gonna keep it that way and then um, um, so this one also if you feel like you can add some spacer beads in between these but uh, I feel that the wire can be exposed a bit that's okay because it's a weed lawn a 19 stand bead stringing wire in the gold color which will complement my project so far so I really like this so I have strung these let me measure this for you guys it's not a lot I'm I have like I need seven and a half inch seven and a quarter to be exact uh, my wrist size so it's like six and a half and and I'm going to use some leather and buttons as well. This I took from my stash. I don't know the significance of this. This is an antique button. It has that um, kind of a sea theme, I would say. Uh, you can see the ship right there. Um, I don't know if you, the camera is picking it up or not. So this is what um, the button is. And I really like it. And it will go with. So for the silver element here. So as I said, antique gold some bronze bronzish kind of a beads and then some silver antique silver here and there is a some some kind of a silver here as well so i am connecting all the elements this one is a little bit of a copper if i want it's a dagger bead and um, this one is a bicone in orange as well and i also pulled out some brushed gold um i mean these are for you know for the dangles that i'm gonna make so and also and also and also i don't know yeah i need um uh, toggle the not the bar part of the toggle the other part of the toggle this also i need so i'm just gonna go ahead and see if it looks good and everything and what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna take my crimp crimp beads I'm gonna take my size one crimp and drop two of them for myself here. So take this, okay, add it, and then take this and go through the loop in this uh, toggle clasp and come back through that. Then okay, just like that. Happy with the loop. The general tendency of this wire is to crisscross inside the um, crimp bead, so make sure it's parallel to each other. I'm gonna crimp use a crimp pli crimping pliers bead along crimping pliers so I'm just gonna go there is two kind of divots in here as you guys can see the one that is closest to the handle that's the one I'm gonna use I'm gonna use that to crimp first I'm gonna go horizontally and I'm gonna you know press it like that that will split the crimp bead and it will secure both the strands in each of the split and the back part will be like a bead okay then I'm going vertically and then I'm squishing the bead again that will fold the crimp nicely so now it's like a bead okay now I have a short tail I will not cut it because I can the agate beads has a big enough fold to accommodate all of those so I'm not worried about the tail because all the beads are big and these are eight or seed beads so I'm just gonna cut my wire like that
okay just leaving about say an inch of bead stringing wire this is a 19 strand coated wire right so that's that okay so let's take a bead stopper and then hold this right here okay just let that be let's take care of this part of the bracelet so i have here some um leather this is from michael's bead landing brand round leather this is two millimeter leather and um, so i'm gonna take this darker color brown and um, about say six inches at least is needed for this six to eight inches of uh, wire i don't want it to be less because um, then you will waste the entire thing so i just cut it and then fold it into half okay just take this okay and so you can do a barrel knot or you know you can do a regular knot it's totally up to you So that's kind of a knot that I want. It's a kind of a barrel knot, let me tell you guys. So I take one end of the cord. This is about say two third okay so one third is here two thirds are here so i take this bigger longer cord and take it above this is towards me that's away from me take it above and keep it like that and then take the same cord and go through that loop that you created okay that will give you a knot then you push while you are pushing or tightening the knot up just make sure that both the ends are same and there you have a knot right so we need another knot right about say here so now it's almost the same uh, size the cords are now take these two cords and this knot is a little bit different and I really like to use it I don't know what it is called or so but I really like it and use it in my projects so that's the first time I'm teaching in my channel as well so this is an overhand knot with both the cords together but this one is with the single cord because what happened was the the leather is a little bit small so you can salvage it by this so so just make sure that don't tie the knot completely because you want to check whether your button will fit through the loophole in it so it's a little bit tight but about say is right so over here i shall tighten my knot you can also put a drop of glue right there once you're done so this is going to be the this part right this is where your button will go so if you hold this and this this is how big your bracelet will be now again i want to measure this uh, bracelet and see if it will fit me or it's big as you guys can see it's about say eight and a half inch we don't want that much um, of my beads so what you can do here is i don't want to take off this but I want to take off this okay and then I take two of these beads off and then see if it fits everyone fits through that so this is about say seven and a half inch that will be perfect for my wrist size 
so what I'm going to do here is if you want you can change see this is how it's gonna look and it looks pretty in my opinion so what I'm going to do here is take this button off and we have the crimp bead already here don't crimp it yet go through the shank hole of the button first the crimp bead then the button then the crimp bead and then it's gonna go through this just pull it okay and you want a little bit of beads here otherwise this will not sit properly as you guys can see you I need to add some more beads because this is an agate bead that means the button will not sit properly when it is like this so here if I do this this is how my bracelet will be sitting around my wrist I really like the pattern that's cute kind of matches that right okay so see if this fits you so I need to wear it and see if it fits me and if I will be able to you know put this on actually it's a snug fit which is what I want but now I know that I need to add some seed beads here I cannot add an agate bead that will make it really big so let's see now take this off So after this, um, I'm gonna add some seed beads, like the ones which is you know. So two seed beads, I think is good enough, and maybe one more, just to be on the safer side, I guess. And then take this. And then if you come back see how kinked the wire is so don't kink it so much but in this case you need it to exactly find so now if you add this see it's a little bit too much right so I'll take one more bead off one more seed bead off that will give my perfect distance from the shank of the button like from the hole to the end of the button so take this, put it through, come back through the crumb bead, the seed beads, and back it. Once it comes out of the get now you can pull nicely whenever you crimp always keep the necklace or the bracelet doesn't matter in a u format so that will give you that little bit of breathing space which you need otherwise the bracelet will be stiff now go ahead and crimp as i said i go horizontally first and then vertical make sure it's nicely crimped but also make sure that you don't crush the seed weed right next to it there we go now you can snip off this excess wire just hold it tight and cut it And there will be a short tail which you can tuck it inside the bracelet and this is what it is okay so and 
now what we are going to do is we are going to add the dangles I still have three more beads left so the dangles I have a bunch of options right here so I'm gonna use gold um, head pins you can use antique gold or bronze would be nice too um, but we can add gold head pins too anyways we are mixed metaling the entire bracelet so that's not a problem I know for sure I want this one here I will do with the jump ring but um, if we want to add this right here I'm gonna take the spacer bead right here oops this one is having a bigger hole so I have a small crystal right there and this okay one more spacer bead will do maybe this one will do let's try that doesn't that's not my favorite let's try this And one more will be these two. Yeah, I like it. So what I'm going to do here is take my round nose pliers. So you can use a jump ring. You can make this... Um, actually I would suggest use a jump ring you can also directly wire wrap it with that but I don't like that so if you use jump rings actually it's much better because it moves freely through the design so I will come back and tuck the tail here take your pliers bend it forward reposition your pliers make a loop then hold the loop then take your you can use this I think this is a 22 gauge wire so ear wire mm, I mean the um, head pins is made of 22 gauge so it's nice and pliable for me to, uh oh everything came off okay let's just use another one okay. but I want only this Just make sure you don't poke yourself, which I did right now. So I will take a small this bead so that it doesn't fall off. some kind of a residual here I think it's the patina take your own nose pliers make sure everything is proper as I said 18 gauge wire you can easily do it with your hands but you can also use your pliers if you want and then snip that excess wire off take your pliers and tuck that tail in and we need to tuck this one as well okay 
now I shall go for the jump rings so I need some jump rings I'll use bronze jump rings so that we can tie everything together <coughs> You can use three separate jump rings or you can use just one jump ring that is also fine let's see what looks good and then we can make a decision regarding that open it up then add this i think one jump ring is actually two jump rings add all of these so the number three is aesthetically very pleasing to our eyes and everything so that's why we are using three charms you can use as less as one um, but that's why we are using three the number three is that way so open your jump ring back and forth twist it towards you so I take this jump ring add it to this and then to this so that it moves nice and free and there is no you know it doesn't it sits perfectly there that's why but you can also use one jump ring but i really like to use a couple of jump rings make sure it's nice and closed so this is our end product how cool is that i really like the way this turned out to be i hope you guys like it too if you do give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel don't forget to hit the bell icon for notification i do upload videos couple of times a week thanks so much for watching this easy tutorial is just beat stringing but it is amazingly uh, pretty and a statement piece thank you bye bye